Hello, class. I hope that you are well. I am Mr. Sutton. I am a math teacher at Heron High School, and I'm going to be making all of the Algebra 2 videos for the ICS school. So if you're a student of Parsons or Claywell and Cleaver, you are in the right place. If you could go ahead and make sure you have something to write with and something to write on, whether you we're able to print off the notes, or if you just have a scratch piece of paper, something so that you can follow along with this video. Today, we're going to be talking about exponential functions. So here it says, let's brainstorm what we remember about the exponential parent function. So I am asking you to go back to the lesson on parent functions back at the beginning of the semester. Uh, we talked about an exponential parent function, and I would like for you to think back and try to remember what both the equation for that parent function is, as well as what the graph looks like. Go ahead and pause the video right now and try to come up with these two things. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, hopefully we were able to come up with something like Either of these two things for the equation, we have a function equal to 2 raised to the x power, where x is in the exponent. That's why it's called exponential function. And then the graph, the key point here is this y-intercept, the 0, comma 1. We know that if we plug 0 in here, anything raised to the 0 power is an output of 1. So we have that point. And then as we start to plug in, larger and larger things into this exponent. It's going to start growing faster and faster. As we start to plug in more and more negative things, it's going to start approaching zero. We're going to get smaller and smaller fractions or decimals here. Okay, so hopefully that refreshes your memory somewhat on exponents. Let's go ahead and turn to the notes here. This is what your notes should look like. At the top here, it says exponential function in this box. Here we're going to write the general form for an exponential function. That is f of x is some a value multiplied by some b value where b is being raised to the x power. And in today's lesson, we're going to talk about the a and the b value, how that changes what our graph looks like when a and b change okay so first we're going to take a look at how the b affects the exponential graph and then we're going to take a look at how the a value affects our exponential graph so here we have this table and we're given y equals 2x that's our parent function here so we want to start filling out this table remember if you plug in negative exponents that means the inverse, right? So this becomes 2 squared, and the denominator, 2 squared is 4. Right? If I had 2 to the negative 1 power, that just becomes a 2 to the first power in the denominator. So that's just 1 half, okay? Anything to the 0 power is 1. And 2 to the first power is 2. 2 squared is 4. So we have this table. We can go ahead and plot these coordinates. So we have our x values, our y values. We can go ahead and plot these negative 2, 1 fourth. I'm going to do my best to approximate these fractional outputs. So this is what your coordinates should look like in the end. And if we go ahead and draw in our line, again, as we plug in values that are larger and larger, it starts to go over very rapidly. As we plug in values that are more negative, it starts to approach zero. So let's see what happens when we change this B value to something a little larger. We have 4 
at step two, I'm going to go ahead and switch to blue here, start filling out this table. And to save time on the video, I think I'm going to go ahead and pause this and skip ahead a little bit. So this is what your outputs should be. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again and plot these on the graph over here. So as hopefully you can tell, when the B value increased to 4, it started growing a lot faster when we plugged in our positive numbers. And as we plugged in negative numbers, it actually approached 0 a lot faster as well. When I plugged in negative 2 over here, I got 1 fourth. When I plugged in negative 2 over here, I got 1 16th, which is a much smaller output. So let's go ahead and look at the example 2 section of the notes. So here we have some fractional B values. We have 1 half and 1 fourth. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again and fill out this table here when the B value is 1 half. So this is what your outputs should be. So this time we have a fraction and we're plugging in a negative exponent. So that moves it to the numerator. So our negative exponents are going to give us larger outputs and our larger exponents are going to give us these fractional outputs we have here. So let's go ahead and start plotting these coordinates and see what this looks like. So we have negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 1. Your graph should look something like this, and you might notice that this is basically a reflection of the graph we had here. Instead of growing to the right and decreasing to the left, here to the left it's growing, and to the right it's approaching zero. So now, go ahead and take a look. This last example here where b is one-fourth, Go ahead and fill out this table here and plot those coordinates and see what kind of outputs you get. Okay, you should have gotten something like this. So this time, as we plug in negative values, it starts growing a lot faster than over here. If I plug in negative 2, I get 16 versus 4. And as I plug in larger values, it approaches 0 a lot faster than it does over here. So then at the bottom of this page, you should have something like this at the bottom of the front page of the notes where I'm going to generalize what's happening here. So our y-intercept for all of these examples is 1. 0, 1 is that coordinate. The domain for both examples is all real numbers. So remember the domain, we're talking about the x values. So we're including x values to the left to infinity and to the right to infinity. With the range, however, we're only talking about y values greater than zero. Remember, we approach zero, we never touch it or cross it to the negative side on the y-axis, which also means that there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, so we're approaching that value but never actually touching it. The difference here is the shape. Uh, for example, one, when we had a b value greater than one, we had two and we had four. For those examples, the shape of our graph grew to the right and approached zero to the left. For example, two, we had b values between zero and one. We had one half and one fourth. For those examples, our graph grew to the left and approached zero to the right. Okay. And then down here, it says, how does the B value affect the graphs? And I think what we notice here is as the B value gets larger, the graph gets steeper. It increases much quicker on the positive side and approaches zero much quicker on the negative side for this example. Okay. 
So we have a U try here. I would like for you to do this on your own now. Pause the video and complete this U try. Please fill out the table, the Y coordinates for this function, and plot the points on the graph. Go ahead and do that right now. Here is the answer you should have gotten. Since we have a fractional B value, uh, it is growing to the left and approaching zero to the right. You should have gotten these outputs, and this should be your general shape. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next part of the notes. Here we're talking about how A affects our graph. So remember, A is this number that's being multiplied out in front here. So the B value is staying consistent here. It's staying at 2. The, the parent graph, we have the B value of 2, so that's what we're using here. But now we're changing the A value in front. So I'm going to go ahead and fill out this table and make my graph over here to the right for this first example. Okay, hopefully we're familiar with this one at this point. So now... We want to compare that to what happens when we change this from a 1 to a 3. I'm going to go ahead and fill out this table and make my graph over here. This so time I'm going to use green. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Please follow along with me here. So this is what your table should look like, and this is what your graph should look like. So notice that when our A value changed from 1 to 3, our Y intercept also changed from 1 to 3. So let's go ahead and take a look here, the next part of the notes. We have a summary of the changes here when, sorry about that. Uh, so the end behavior when our B value is between 0 and 1, that is what is called exponential decay. And looks like this. Exponential decay. And I went ahead and finished writing this out so you don't have to watch me write. Uh, exponential decay looks like this. Over here, when B is greater than 1, we have exponential growth. So as we plug in larger values, it grows to the right. So as we plug in negative values, it approaches 0. The Y intercept is 0, comma A. So whatever that A value is, like we noticed in this last example, when A was 3, our y-intercept changed to 3. The earlier examples, it was 1 every time. That was because our A value was 1. So when the A value changes, so does our y-intercept. We always have this horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. The domain is always going to be all real numbers, and the range should always be y is greater than 0. Okay, there's your summary. And then we'll look at... This last example here, and then we'll have one more U try. The video will be over. So, this last example, the domain, all real numbers, range, y is greater than zero, asymptote y equals zero. It's always going to be true. Our intercept, we don't have an a value in front, we don't have a number being multiplied out here, so that means it's being multiplied by an invisible one. So we just have the normal 0, 1 intercept. And then the B value, since this is a B value larger than 1, we have growth. Okay. For this example, once again, domain, all real numbers, range, y is greater than 0, asymptote y equals 0, intercepts. 0, 1. Once again, no A value shown here. So that means we just have an invisible 1 being multiplied. Here, though, the B value is less than 1. So that means we have decay. Okay. As the video wraps up, I would like for you to try this one last U try. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Go ahead and try this on your own. Pause the video. Go ahead and try this. All right, and these are the answers you should have given. Uh, hopefully in the future I'll be able to do a better job of managing my time here.